what we are doing is that we are manipulating and trying to manipulate and control single quantum particles. At the microscopic level, uh, matter is made of atoms and, and light is made of uh, small entities which are called photons. And so we learned how to isolate these photons, how to have them interact with single atoms, and we try to learn from that ways, first of all, how nature behaves, and, and then ways to use this knowledge, maybe to develop some application in the future. We are trying to uh, control better quantum system. For the time being, what we do is that we observe, we isolate uh, quantum, sim simple quantum system, we isolate photons in a box and we look at the way they behave and we observe these photons without destroying them, which is not so easy. When you, when you observe light, usually you destroy it. When, when uh, light is striking your eye, uh, you get the visual impression that the light is absorbed on your retina and is destroyed. The way we observe light is quite different. And in the next stage, of what we would like to do is to use this in, in information we get from what we see to change the behavior of light. It's called feedback. We want to react on the system, use information we get from the system to, to drive these photons into new states of light, which could be useful for something. So we try to get more control about our systems and there are developments in this direction, not only in my laboratory, but in many, many laboratories around the world. I know that there will be devices which will be useful, uh, like quantum simulators, system which, in which you would uh, manipulate atoms and put atoms in a regular uh, lattice, in a regular uh, structure, to imitate what nature is doing at a much smaller scale. And from letting the atoms behave in such structures, you will learn about what happens in real materials and maybe learn ways to synthesize new materials, for instance, which could carry uh, electricity at higher temperatures than normal superconductivity and so on. So I'm sure that uh, these quantum IEDs will be useful for something. But I am not sure it will be what people talk about now, like, like the uh, kind of utopian uh, quantum computer because uh, there are a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems which are not solved uh, for the, in, in this direction. I did not know that I would get a Nobel Prize and uh, this happened progressively and uh, when we obtained in my lab very nice beautiful results, I, the pleasure to, to get the results was the most important and not the kind of recognition that you would get afterward. To go into science only if he or she has a passion for that, because it's not easy and it's not the uh, situation for young scientists is not easy, economically speaking, and uh, uh, all over in Europe and even in other countries. So you really have to dedicate to be dedicated. Also to go in, in the direction which he or she likes and try not to respond to, to fashion, to fashionable topics. That's why I don't like this term quantum computer. It's a fashion. What is behind, which is the knowledge, basic knowledge to learn uh, how to manipulate uh, quantum particles and to learn about the, the, inter, the way uh, matter behaves at a microscopic scale is a real thing, the important thing. Uh, to, to, talk it a, to call it a quantum computer might be misleading. And so, not try to not to obey to to, to fashion the second I, and and the third advice would be not to be uh, not to be inhibited by all the knowledge which has been accumulated before you uh, and which will might give you the feeling that you will never be able to catch up. You know, there is a, the, a, a young scientist must be naive enough. To, to think that he can make his or her own contribution because he does not need to know everything. He just needs to, to know in one direction something that other people don't because now it has become impossible to try to have a universal knowledge about everything.